All right, it's Tuesday. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. Hey, Jim, FANG stocks are rebounding. Yeah, now let's not get too carried away. Uh, bank stocks are completely in control of the Fed. So if you're buying them today, you better know exactly what the Fed's going to say tomorrow. I don't. Uh, we bought, we sold some city last week for action alerts because it went, ran up and was the best performer and then rotated into the worst performer, which is buy some wells. I still feel that's going, going to be okay. But I am not crazy about buying the bank stocks without knowing whether the Fed is going to signal that there could be a second rate hike. If they are soft at all, uh, then I think the group gives it up. So uh, be very careful. I think you can buy a wells as we did for action alert because it's just, it hasn't done anything. But if you're going in and you're buying a JP Morgan, you're going to have to really have some very solid evidence that they feel strong about the economy. And I don't know how strongly they feel. I do think that what they're doing is trying to normalize things. If trying to normalize things, JP Morgan go up a buck. Are also tech stocks in the FANG group are also rebounding. Yeah, now, they, this is a, not the kind of rebound that I want. Um, it, it's not, uh, you need to see Micron take out 33. That's one of my. Uh, non-fang, but wh what I'm worried about is is that if you bought at the low yesterday, you're going to be banging them out today. So don't get overconfident, fang. Hmm. Okay. Also, Alibaba's price target was raised. That's different. Alibaba is a really new story in terms of the accelerated revenue growth. I would buy that stock right here. Um, and then Tesla upgraded at Berenberg. Tesla, look, uh, Ron Barron, a major fund manager this morning on Squawk, talking about it go growing to the sky. Uh, my issue with Tesla is I don't know how to value it. Mm. But I will tell you this. It's not being valued as an auto stock. It's being valued as a tech stock. It's being valued just like Netflix and just like mm. Amazon. So the Tesla bulls will continue to buy it. All right, and then Action Alerts Plus named Western Digital raising its bid for yeah, Toshiba's yeah. Now, Western Digital, if they get this, they're going to have to issue both debt and maybe equity. If that's the case, the equity may be issued in the hole, and that's when you uh, get your chance. We, you know, we trim some at 91 because we've said this is more of a trade than we're typically used to, but if they do get Toshiba, it's going to go right to 100 All right, and after that, they do the deal. All right, and then on Mad Dash on Squawk on the Street, you talked about McDonald's? Yes, I mean, look, McDonald's has been, Steve Easterbrook has probably, uh, has led this company out of the wilderness, and the numbers have been very good, and uh, Bank of America just put kind of uh, put a coda to it, saying, you're going to have another good quarter now. Uh, I see they're hiring 250,000 people. McDonald's represents, uh, the along with 3M, uh, really core names in the Dow that people keep reaching to every time a sell-off's completed. All right, and then on Stop Trading on Squawk on the Street, you talked about P&G. Yeah, now P&G, here's what matters with P&G. Uh, I've been waiting for Tryon to come out with its white paper. I think Tryon spent a huge amount of time uh, trying to uh, change the um, management at GE, having that just, I, I think people put it in this context. Nelson Peltz, in October of 2015, called me, along with Jeff Immel, on a Sunday. I was out in Oregon visiting my daughter, talking about how much, how they're gonna work together to get uh, and Nelson uh, was called in by Jeff to work together to really get uh, things rolling, including a $2 number for 2018. That fourth quarter of GE was so bad, and the first quarter with negative cash flow really soured the relationship. And Tryon, uh, behind the scenes, I think, was working very hard to make this change, and I know that they're happy. If they're happy, then they can train their guns on the next situation, Proctor. Bruce Kamich did a uh, chart of Proctor, if you're worried about coming in right here. 3% yielder, pretty good company. You get Tryon militating in there, I think you could get to 91, 92. And while we're talking about Proctor, yesterday you told us to look at Apple versus Proctor. Yeah, well, you know, look, I mean, I, I, here's the problem. Proctor trades at 23 times earnings. And the analysts uh, from Mizuho who downgraded Apple, what I was trying to get him to do is think about Apple as Clorox, as Proctor. And Clorox, by the way, run by Ben O'Dor, who is a fantastic manager. Uh, some of the, you know, Kimberly's run very, very well. But, it, but that doesn't mean that they should have 22, 23 multiple, but they do because they're steady growth. And I am wondering whether you can't look at the stream of revenue that Apple has from service. I got mine last night and I said, geez, I just paid $16 for the New York Times. And I I just paid $10 to be part of the music club. That's 26 bucks. You know that Apple gets a cut. I just wrote a check basically to Apple. So did the rest of the world. And we look at this and we say to ourselves, this stream isn't worth it. I love the stream. And by the way, the stream is most aggressively being built in China, where the Mizuho analysts question the Chinese growth. So I am uh, a big believer that, that Apple is a consumer products company and you should own it with the idea that it's going to get uh, ever higher price earnings multiple. Not a reason to 
own something. Just a reason not to sell it. Ah, okay, important distinction. All right, let's move on to oil. Uh, production rose in May, even with the deal. Yeah, now look, uh, oil, and I'm going to be talking a lot about oil. I have an extensive section about oil tomorrow in my uh, talk, in my conference call with club members. Uh, oil is challenged here because of how much is being come out of the Permian. I thought was interesting was that the Saudis are actually cutting the production to, that they're shipping here. They had always tried to maintain relationships with major oil companies, and it looks like they're willing to risk those relationships. The Permian is doubling in the amount that we have. I'm doing a, a seminar with uh, Rusty Brazil from RBN Energy before, and then I'm sitting down with him before I do my conference call to be sure I've got my facts straight. But the Permian is saturating the U.S. market. So it's very difficult for oil to lift unless you see a rig count go down at that come out on Friday, and the rig count keeps going up. So I don't expect oil to go back to 53. I do not believe the death cross where oil will go back into the 30s. I do think that the Saudis are very clever and they manipulate the price. Um, but uh, as the oils go up, be careful. All right, Jim, you mentioned your actual Earth Plus call. That's tomorrow yes. at noon. And, Jim, at I couldn't, noon. couldn't think of a better time to have a call. Oh, my. Working all night last night on it. And, then of course, obviously going to put a, lot, put a lot more into it tonight and tomorrow as the situations percolate. And the feedback you get from it is just unbelievable. Well, we do get more feedback than anything I've ever done. Uh, as long, I mean, I started thestreet.com. Uh, in 1995, and this is the most feedback I've ever had from anything, and boy, do we ever devour your feedback. We're scrutinizing all your questions, trying to get the ones that we think can benefit the most club members. All right, it's so important. Jim thank Kramer, you thank you so much. much. Again, it's tomorrow at noon, and for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.